White Trunks from Budapest, Julia Talusi. And his opponent across the ring in the red corner. He weighed in at 10 stone, five pounds. His unbeaten record will consist of four fights, four wins, two coming my way of KO. Wearing the black and gold trunks from Toronto, Canada. Our man, the Savage Prince, Alec Hazy. He looks full of charisma. Look at him, the, the movement, the swagger, everything. Boxes. Let's see if that can transcend into his boxing. So four threes at the ten and a half stone limit. Holman Alakozai. And Judah Talisi. So his first York call outing. The Canadian resident, four wins from four. Nice wide stance. Shapes up really nicely, just a couple of left hooks early. To low seat. history books earlier this week to see some of the names that have graced this ring in York Hall. Lennox Lewis, Joe Kawasaki, Chris Eubank and Marshall Ben. Nice right hand from Alakozai there. Even Vasyl Lomachenko had a great scrap with Sam Maxwell here in the WSB. He's one of two poor old Sam Maxwell had to box him twice in, uh, in the kind of semi-pro ranks as it were. Oh yes, yeah. Oh, a stiff right hand counter from Alakozai. Quite competitive already, isn't it? Right, Tolosi's thrown with plenty of intent so far. Alakozai still looks like he's in second gear. Well, that one caught him that back caught on him the in chin. Straight round on the chin. And he's trying to follow through with a few more punches there. He was KO by Cho Murray a while ago. He was a turn stop by Liam Walsh. It was for the British Super Featherweight title. Nice one two from him there. Very aggressive. Given Alakozai a couple of things to think about early, isn't he? Just caught in flush a number of occasions. And I think Alakozai has yet to really click into anything like third or fourth gear. But uh, he's just got to be careful with, you as don't you say. Get, exactly, you don't want to get caught cold at this stage. No. He's flicking at the jab well, but he's not really coming with anything else. And there we go once again. He's still really trying to look for the openings, whilst, uh, in contrast, Tolosi has uh, decided to put his foot straight on the gas. At any opportunity, just throwing savage combinations. Just winging those shots in. Steps off to his right-hand side, now holds on the inside. And it's the end of round number one. And, uh, well, he's come for a fight. He <laughs> has. Jilla Tolosi. <laughs> I think Alakoza needs to be on the back foot and countering until he actually warms into this fight. It's very dangerous standing there and trying to trade with someone who's already amped up. He needs to be on the back foot and counter until he warms in. Corners, 10 seconds. 10 rounds, round two. So Alakoza bouncing around in 
the red corner and he's just going to need to be a little bit more switched on than he was in that opening round. I think he controlled okay, proceedings. there we go. But he's really shown that, but he didn't really like what came back. A double jab and a straight, but wasn't able to handle re the return. As we said, two of his four wins have already come via stoppage, Alakozai. So we know he can punch. Just missed that corkscrew uppercut. And you can see through his whole body into that. He's really trying to get those angles in his shots. Just try and catch him with something, it seems. It doesn't seem to matter what. He just wants to swing away. And sometimes it is the shots that come from outside the field of vision. The ones that you don't see are the ones that can do the damage. It's true because it's seeming that Elikoza is a bit disorientated by that. Nikozai switching there to Southpaw momentarily, comes back orthodox, lands the one-two. Kind of tactic as his career goes on. If he ends up fighting in eight or ten rounders, Tolosa is not going to be able to throw this much into these kind of shots early because he'll just run out of steam. Sure, most definitely. You can see every shot he throws is full of effort. I guess at this stage you can get away with it. Four, four threes. It's kind of doable. We see it in the amateurs, the frantic kind of pace. You watch the Olympic Games in Rio, the the pace and. The <laughs> The franticness speed. of the violence, I mean, yeah. it's, it, it, you know, it is savage, but part of the learning curve is that you start to pace yourself and it shows a little bit more like what Alakoza is doing here than rather what... Uh, but then you see a fighter like Tyson who just went totally against that and just said, I'm going to try and get my fighters out as soon as possible. Mm. Yeah, it worked for him. I think he had something like an average of three rounds that he went in his first 34 pro fights. But right. turned into a weakness in the later stages of his fights. When right. it came to going the distance, he just wasn't used to it. Well, absolutely. I think we saw that in evidence in the, the Buster Douglas fight when things started to get uh, difficult in the later rounds and he came apart. But anyway, we, we digress slightly. Alakozai just um, taking his time working his way into this one. He hasn't got all day, only four rounds, and we're two in so far. How are you so seeing this? He's looking quite tired now. So. Uh, it might be a change of events when this fight comes. Right now, he's the aggressor, and he's been throwing the most awkward shots, wild combinations in it. it seems like Alakozi's still on um, gear one. So let's see what happens. Just but, wonder if you, you, but you can get stuck in gear one because you're disorientated. It's hard for you to come out of that mode. Yeah, I haven't particularly been given the, the room, space, or time to think his way into this one. And uh, he, he sort of postures and holds himself more like a thinking man's fighter and uh, a slightly nightmarish opponent for him in, in exactly. that sense of the word. But as we said, the key is to be able to adjust. So where we go then, third round of four, and Alakozai perhaps knows he's got to just try and step on the gas a little bit, but he's in there against a, an aggressive, dangerous opponent who seems to just sort of throw caution to the wind in some senses of the word. In Jelly Toulouse. Toulouse is seeing him a bit tired now. As you said, you couldn't have keep up that ferocity of punches for that long. And I think it's um, is at the tail end of that now. Now he's just looking to hold and spoil as uh, Alakozai lands the. Which will give Alakozai an opportunity to warm into the fight now. As it seems he's doing. Clubs the right hand against the glove of Alakozai, just starting to try and push his man back a little bit. But again, Toulouse, good work to fight and spin off the ropes. He knows he doesn't want to be stuck here. He's working hard to try and get out of this position. Every time he is on the ropes, he is fighting back or holding. Which is very smart. Especially at the stage he is now, we can see he's tired. 
very tired I bet so another prophecy fulfilled then was those early losing, shots he's he's so that much into. yeah he's losing that snap in his punches as well now and that body shot really did hurt him and Alakozai yeah. now starting to land things of real merit to and sometimes if you can weather the storm in the beginning the fight can really turn around but that's still a bit of a gamble big gamble indeed but one that just looks as if potentially it could pay off for Alakozai so far as he just goes up through the gears now and starts to apply that more sustained and regular pressure to, to Lucy lands a left hook to the body for the third time this round and he's now looking for it because I think he knows that when he's landed that previously it's hurt his opposite man he just slumps to his knees and again a real sign of fatigue very much so breathing heavily now the mouth open as Alakozai comes forward and will that leave an opportunity if he throws something hard upstairs and this is where Alakozai needs to just really relax now and just pick his shots and start amping up on the combinations oh goodness me well, he missed by a long way there he nearly clipped us at the commentary desk, but I think it's signalling the momentum shift in the contest nonetheless. Toulouse digs in defiantly, got a right to the body. And now Alakoza comes forward. That's a good body forward. shot there, and that's what, that's what he really needs to do now, just get those body shots and just punch the air out of him. Certainly is on the way to doing that. And again, Toulouse throws really quite a long <laughs> laboured really uppercut accurate. through the middle. And I think uh, Alakozai as well, I'm sure you'll know this from your own personal experience, Joshua, when a fighter's kind of punched themselves out and is out of gas, you feel the sting out of their shots, and that gives you extra impetus, I imagine. Exactly. But I still think is still a bit disorientated. He still needs to just relax and pick his shots properly. It's, still, it's like he still wants to go to war. He doesn't need to. See Andre, uh, see Andre Sterling sitting up the back in the back row, enjoying the action after a pretty stellar performance earlier on this evening at the top of the show. And right now, Alakozai just going up through the gears, trying to get his man out of there, knows he's tired now, he can sense it. The crowd yeah. can sense it too. And that's it, he needs to just keep that range, that's good. Stay at that distance, ooh, 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 that was a good body shot. I just saw his legs just go after that body shot. Lovely shot from Alakoza. I think there's just not a great deal left in the legs, is there? But he's really kind of fighting on instinct now, Toulouse. Yeah, this is survival mode where you never really should take <laughs> let your body go into survival mode this early. I think it was uh, I think it was fairly clear from the opening round and a half that this had the potential to happen for Solosi just with the the mount he was putting into the shots, but they weren't really troubling Alakozai. He just seemed to be waiting for his opportunity, and as you say, a bit of a gamble, but it's paid off. And that kind of came straight through the side of the guard, but really. The power in these shots has just really faded out of the work of Toulouse. And a horrible place to be in as a left hook comes through the guard and really the legs have started to go, the mouth guard through. comes out. I think yeah. that was a, perhaps a bit of tactics from Toulouse. I'm certain I've seen him at the Haringey Box Cup, you know. Yeah. I've 100% seen him box before. My brain has been racking from <laughs> from uh, early. Let's try to think where, and I'm fairly sure the Hungarian team do bring over a couple they of do, clubs actually, you're right. you're to the box right. cup, and uh, I've definitely watched him box before. Well, at least you were, at least you got it before the last round or before <laughs> the end of the fight. It was driving me crazy, but it was uh, yeah, it was Haringey box cup, and I'm sure it could well have been his kind of recklessness and, and aggression that caught my eye then as well, and yeah. maybe sign that he hasn't learnt is uh, such a gamble but it may have paid off for him a few times absolutely I'm sure it has I'm sure it has he's certainly got power in the early rounds but you know, the question over whether he carries it late I think has been answered emphatically here and uh, Hulman Alakozai is on his way to what we assume will be 
victory on the scorecards as he walks forwards again, putting his man under pressure. It's not being textbook performance from him, though. Still, it still will feel... And that shot there is what he needed to do, just patient, wait, and just load up, but he wasn't. He was just tangling up and giving to Los exactly what he wanted. A chance to hold. Well, it's not been the tidiest of encounters, this one, I think that's fair to say. Um, some of the contests we've seen have been exceptionally clean and crisp Which boxing has been a bit messy at, at most points. Most definitely. Usually when you go against opponents like this, you usually get to see uh, very messy fights, but it's so far very clean fights, which has been very good. Absolutely. Well, we will go to the judges' scorecards, whether the early work and energy expended by Jula Tolosi will have done enough for him on the scorecards, yet to be seen. Harman Alakozai, though, seemed to just take a little longer to warm up into it and certainly took the latter half of Most definitely. the fight. So we'll see what the judges' scorecards reflect and who they fancy to take victory in this one. I don't think we'd have any doubt if this was over six rounds, the direction of the contest, but that's the beauty of the four-rounder, isn't it? Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, we show your appreciation for both boxers. Super lightweight division. The referee goes through scorecards. The referee has scored the bouts 39 points to 37 points. In favour of the winner, in the red corner, from Toronto, Canada, Elman, the Savage Prince, Alec Please show your appreciation for the gallant, Julia Tomasi. Um, and congratulations, uh, points, victory in your fifth fight. How did you feel? I think that was my worst fight today. You weren't happy with yourself? No, no. Horrible fight. What did you think you did wrong? Try to, try to fight him. I should have stuck to my game plan originally. Which Go. was? Jab him, jab him, throw combinations, dig downstairs. I would have knocked him out. Just Every single time I do a left hook to the body, he came and grabbed me. Like, I mean, he's vastly experienced. So yeah, he got he got warned a bunch of times, but they didn't take any points off. So. What did you what what did you think you did right? What I think I did right? Yeah. Well, I turned it up when I had to. Right. Like my last fight was six rounds. The fight before that was ten rounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're a Czech champion, right? Yeah, I'm the Czech welterweight champion. I fought in Canada. I'm trying to make my mark in the UK. I was going to say this is your first fight. How did you find York Hall? <laughs> York Hall is a beautiful place. A lot of history behind it. And uh, I got a good fan base over here. A lot yeah, of people. You've had very good support, yeah. I've, I've sold uh, around 70 tickets, and I'm not even from here. I'm, I live in Canada, but I still sold 70 You're tickets. You're going to have a few more fights over here? Hopefully, yeah, definitely I'll be back. A lot better performance. That was like maybe a 5 out of 10 performance on my part. So I'm sorry if uh, no, well, it was bad. It was an entertaining fight, so well done. Well done on the win.